Welcome to Earth and Pulse. I started. <laughs> Claudia just said, you start. And I said, I started. Yeah, that's usually what I get to do here. Um, Christine and Claudia of Earth Impasse, uh, we recorded a few days ago um, a small, I guess, shorter one-hour piece on Germany, World War II, and Adolf Hitler. And uh, <clears throat> since that recording, we've, we've, looked at, we've been looking at this for years. Um, I don't think I can be cheery today about anything. Um, I've been going deeper and deeper into the research on this subject with a very, very deep understanding that is growing in me why this is important. It's not just about setting the record straight, uh, which is an honorable, very honorable thing to do, a uh, very truthful thing to do. Uh, but if we don't go into this particular story and territory, which is the very foundation of how our new world order, the predatory agents on this planet have been operating. It's for the modern time, it started with World War I and World War II. Um, what I'm getting, Claudia, and uh, we had a little very short conversation, is that what's welling up in me is really deep. It, mm -hmm. It's like a, a you know, when we wrote the title last one was uh, Sorrow is Knowledge. Well, you know, what they say, if we don't find out what our real history is, we will repeat it. And that, frankly, is the intention. So I'm feeling very, uh, I was, I, I'm not a person that's easily discouraged, but I feel discouraged right now. I almost feel a borderline of despair due to the fact that most humans want to and choose to remain ignorant, even when presented with an alternative view, well done, well documented. You know, I, don't, I know they don't have to have my opinion. I don't want them to believe me. I've never asked anybody to believe a thing I say, but won't take the time. They won't have enough interest to understand the consequences and the real line that we're standing on as a humanity right now. To even yeah, I want to say there is a huge difference between someone who disbelieves something and someone who chooses to simply be ignorant. Mm -hmm. And I promise that ignorance is going to bite you in the ass. And it is, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, I've been talking a lot to people locally and people around dinner tables and, you know, it's a different type of conversation than the one that Claudia and I have here on the internet or the one we have with people that we understand. We have the same understanding of our history and we've been looking at the same documentation and all of that. Uh, and so when you're in these conversations, it's, it's a willful ignorance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and an yeah, arc, I'm and, noticing, right? And it, I, I think that's what's hurting me right now, you know. And, and then that the other part that comes is that when you're a truth seeker and you find a truth and you find really showing, you know, David Irving's work is a primary example of a man, a British man, who dug so deep into the real documents. He said, F you to the historians, because they were just, he found that they were just quoting each other. You know, they were espousing these ideologies and then quoting each other and saying that was true. And he really took the time to go to the people that were still alive. And he took the time to, to befriend them and had wives of, you know, SS officers and British officers uh, turn over their husbands' journals. And he read these things and he got into the real people story see there's a people story behind this there are real lives and real people made real decisions and he's done such an excellent job i hadn't really spent a lot of time with his work and what happened to this man he was persecuted he was imprisoned 
His life work was destroyed. And you see, that's how on a very small scale, Claudia, I feel that many of us are being exposed to that the reaction is, I want to destroy you. Like it's, it's, oh yeah. And it, it, it just, I don't know, it hit me yesterday very, very deeply. Not that I'm a, have any fear of that sort of reaction, just the sadness of it, the, the loss of it. Um, yeah. And, you know, I have a lot of really beautiful Jewish friends who have supported me over many, many years of my life. And yet to try to bring to them, not that it's about Judaism, anybody has a right to practice a belief system if they want, but they're the shield for this dark entity on this planet. And yeah. you, you and I have talked about it. And so you, you, you expose yourself when you speak from truth. You really expose yourself. And you, you risk having, you know, many different types of repercussions. Maybe that's not what I really want to talk about today. I just am feeling like you and I uh, have something to share here. It's an invitation. It's an encouragement that people start to do their own research and then make their own conclusions. I mean, the truth will out the lies. It always will. Oh. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, I don't really know what we can add to our, our last talk that we had, uh, other than I would just so encourage uh, anybody who has interest in finding out what the truth was of, of Adolf Hitler and how, uh, you know, he's become the most demonized human ever, and invite you to again and again turn it around and look from the other side, look out another set of eyes. Um, I'm suffering grief right now. And it's a mm-hmm. grief of a tragedy. It's the grief of, of an entity having won a war at the expense of millions of people. And that entity has no empathy. It has no ideology. It has no care. It has no love. It has no truth. It's an emptiness of an extreme. It's a predator, and that we as humans have allowed this to continue. And that's making me feel very, um, I'm not discouraged. I'm just feeling a lot of sadness right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. When I see how many humans in everyday situations have taken on the characteristics of this entity, And I find that very sad. You know, there's almost, it's like so many humans no longer have any humanity within them. Mm -hmm. They're not not compassionate. They they insist on every little right they think they have. And some people have an incredible sense of entitlement in that department. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me want, like, how do you go through life? You know, there, there's emptiness, massive emptiness. Well, I, and this is this is I mean, the, the the real question because if we speak of uh, living in a free will universe where we do have to a certain extent, we always have choice, and what we come to is that most people believe their choices are very limited. Most people at this moment don't understand or haven't done their homework or refuse to take on the responsibility that they are the uh, creators of this reality. And so they get stuck in ideologies and religious belief systems, governments, political parties, you name it. They get stuck in, in that. And I see I'm what I'm feeling personally up against is there's a wall there. And you were right. Mm -hmm. Uh, People will argue their point of view thinking it's their own and if you're if you've gone deep enough into the mind control aspects of the the humanity right now you hear the repetitive machine-like uh responses 
And they're all given with the sense that this is, I have the right to have this opinion. And, you know, who are you to bring anything else to my attention? Uh, But with close observation, and we've been observing people for quite a while now, it's the same speech patterns. And you know that they have picked up these speech patterns and these belief systems off the, the programming through television, religious, whatever. And I guess what I felt, and I just felt it yesterday, and this is in conjunction with uh, reading more about uh, Adolf Hitler and, and really finding out who Winston Churchill was, um, was that um, you can't, there's no real way to address it. No. There, there is no way to get through that. And, yeah. and that was for me, you know, and always I'm very, very stubborn. <laughs> I think I know somebody else stubborn sitting here with me. But I, I, so I try to, you know, I put that in my... You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. I know. But so it's like, I, I, I don't lay down. I don't lay down. I, I will go, okay, what, am I, what are we dealing with? And now I'm speaking to consciousness. There's a truck going by. What are we dealing with? Where are the keys, or is it even necessary? Is it even possible? If the other so such a massive humanity is so lost, I think one of the keys is behavior. Your own behavior, individual behavior. Because whichever way you go in your behavior, it ripples out. Mm -hmm. So if listeners know somebody who is like, you know, one of these humans lacking humanity, encourage everyone to be kind. You don't have to slam the door into the face of the one behind you when you enter a shop, for example. You know, you can just hold the door open. It costs you one second. But the one you are letting in or the one you're holding the door open for will go and be a little bit kinder, him or herself, if only for five minutes. But it doesn't matter. It's a start. And those, there are so many baby steps you can take. And then you will notice that, in a way, it's much nicer to be a little bit kinder. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not kind, then you keep hardening. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you're going to reach the bottom. Yeah. Well, so and then there are probably you know, a few more million cycles of lives on earth mm-hmm. no thank you for saying in that an environment that is become in an environment that is becoming more and more violent i'm done no well, no it's beautiful i'm mean, it's it's like that simple thing and i i think what i feel Oh, when I'm talking, where I'm speaking from is that I see that there's an immense amount of kindness on this planet. There is. Um, I see the very kind people, the uh, the ones that take care of animals, that hold the doors open, that uh, have a humanity in their hearts and their considerations. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was meaning with, you know, some of my most beautiful friends who are of the Jewish faith, where they've held up for me on a very personal level, that kindness and that loving nature. And I think what's driving me right now, Claudia, is that I see that this entity is using that loving nature, has absurd that loving nature and is keeping a large mass of potentially really awake consciousness from really waking up and you know those are the people that I really I know that we don't need or nobody it's not a need thing it's like it doesn't take the the whole mass of humanity to have this great awakening I understand that and yet if we talked about it as a war of consciousness the more consciousness awake consciousness the more we crack open the codes of this uh machine-like or um heart heartless 
uh, predator that has really taken a hold of our earth. And we can't ignore that either. And so, and this is where I go back to, I will go back to the World War II and I will go back to the work of uh, um, David Irving and Dennis Weiss and his uh, epic six hour long uh, documentary of World War II, The Greatest Story Never Told. I just want to keep putting that out there, Claudia, that people take the time to look at these works. They're not the only two. They're, they're not. But they're the current ones that are easy to digest, very coherent. Uh, they've yeah. spent, uh, uh, David Irving especially has spent his whole life uh, trying to get this truth out. I mean, to the extent of, you know, the massive amount of books, his online website, you can download his books free. Uh, and his and there's an amazing amount of speeches from the time he was a younger man to an older man. And, and you know, practically broken, practically broken from being imprisoned, uh, solitary confinement for 440 days. You know, these are the things that, and one, whether you like or agree, or you can even you know, open yourself up enough to listen to his research. I mean, truly documented research. He posts up the facsimiles of all of these uh, diaries of these documents that he found of the articles that were written in the time that this was all happening. You know, all that. I mean, that is an amazing amount of work. And you may find that your own prejudices kick in and you can't quite open it, but you must ask the mm -hmm. question, why would a person be put in prison for doing that type of research? You know, these are the things that, you know, I just yeah. I keep trying to prick a little bit into uh, a, a more a larger spectrum of humanity right now, not just the ones of us that have been talking to each other now for many years. And I, I keep bringing that up as a thing, Claudia, um, you know, reaching outside this bubble. And why is it you, you keep know, breaking up? I, I've got a bad internet connection. Let's just talk about war, Claudia. I mean, see, right now, I'm, and we may never even put this out there. Right now, when I say that to you, that sorrow mm -hmm. wells up inside of me. Yeah. When you realize that we have been at war with each other for millenniums of time and that this entity that we call it an entity has been feeding off of us and promoting this and it's still going on today and even as my mother pointed out to me yesterday well only six percent of the world is at war that's six percent too many Exactly. Exactly. I said, well, you can say that. See, those are one of those convenient thought bites. There are thought bites because it's like, oh, only 6% of the world is at war. So certainly we're doing better. It's a, it, it, it derails one from going deeper into the truth. Is oh, that yeah, it's very false thought of security. Exactly. Exactly. And it I mean, 100% of this world is at war, whether you see it or not. The simple fact that some governments find it perfectly okay to actually establish blacklists of people to be killed by drones. Mm -hmm. Which is the United States of America. Don't call that war. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have a bad connection, so I talked over you. Force, forcing. Sorry, I didn't hear you there. You you keep freezing. Yeah, I'm sorry too because you're also garbled. <laughs> so I okay. <laughs> Maybe we should bail on this today. Maybe. See, I can feel around me right now. Um, there is such a field of energy around my. Can you hear me right now? Mm hmm. Okay, so it's quite likely that I'm, you know, emitting such a frequency right now or whatever you want to call it, that I'm preventing this from uh, uh, from being recorded properly. Um, I can feel it, Claudia. I feel like I'm in a, 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 well, a force field. 
I can feel the uh, energies that are around me at the moment. They're, they're very thick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's never my intention to pull those in. Uh, but it's coming from this emotion. No. So I feel like I'm kind of like electronically compromised at the moment. You no, know, I had this earlier today. Um, I switched on the Bluetooth line on my phone when I'm going to the car because otherwise I don't hear the phone ringing. Um, and about five minutes into the journey, I had to pull over and turn it off because I heard it. I heard the fucking Bluetooth. And it was so awful. And it, as soon as I switched, it was okay again. I didn't hear it, so I knew it was bad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. So I'm just going to take a moment. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I do feel, you know, I, I know what I'm, I'm planning on later in the day and I'm meeting with somebody who I think is going to be very important for me to meet. Um, and, you know, a lot of this has to do again with, you know, our under, growing understanding of uh, frequency, f frequency weapons, frequency signals, and also the mass movement or the grassroots movement of people doing organ organite and really understanding how we can counteract this in a very peaceful, non-harmful manner. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't surprise me that I would get an extra blast of the energies right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and it does, it, it's, it's going to, uh, when you touch into these deeper emotional places, uh, mm -hmm. which is necessary. It's necessary to go this deep. Uh, you, you, we can't keep, you know, just sco sco scooting across the surface here and just talking and talking. If this is an actualization process of our of ourselves. And it comes through the heart. Yes, absolutely. It, it does come through the heart, you know. And so I'm at a point now when I look at Adolf Hitler and I look at what happened there, I want to cry. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to keep coming back to that because that's where we're, we're at right now. I mean, this is, was a tragedy of tragedies. And then, you know, you, and so if folks, if you don't really take an honest, open look at this, take off some blinders here, the same scenario is being played out right now on our planet. The very same one. And I don't know if there is a person in a, on a, in a country right now that had enough character and resolve as Adolf Hitler did. I don't know if he exists or she exists. So I feel like we're being called as, as humans to be that. It's not yeah. up to one person in one country. That's not going to work. All of us have to find that character resolve in ourselves that can You know, so I draw from my emotions, my resolve. And I, I, I really don't think I have anything to say more, Claudia. I really don't. Um, I would, you know. No. I just hope people realize that, you know. You're breaking up again. I know. I know. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, as there are so many, you know what? I would say let's stop recording for now. Okay. Um, we turned off the recording. Yeah, because we were getting so much interference here. Uh, just my, my internet connection is, is very uh, unstable. And as I was explaining to Claudia when we stopped recording, and maybe even before, was that, you know, our emotional state of being, our, our state of being is a great uh, 
uh, generator of energy. So I can't say that there's anything other than uh, right now feeling such a depth of emotion uh, that I can feel my own field of energy. What I want to say, it's not unstable. It's not like that. It's just producing a, 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 a bit of a disturbance. That's okay for me. That's okay. Um, sometimes it's a really good thing to allow yourself to go that deep into the emotion. <clears throat> it's the only way to work through them. Mm -hmm. And usually, well, you know, not usually, I would say every time that we allow ourselves these deeper divings, you know, there's many ways to go deep and there's many tunnels in the psyche and all of that, but the heart, emotional heart, uh, the feeling body is, uh, in my my the way I feel about things and view things is the most important one to generate at this time, which is through our heart energy. And anyone that is seeing what has happened to us, what is happening to this day to us, what is happening to millions of people around the world, what is happening to our oceans, our trees, our skies. Would, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, what I want to say is it does tap down. The taproot of humanity is through the heart. Unstable connection. Hello.